Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 3.1. We're going to talk about electrons and what they do. Um, the alpha principle, what blocks are, electron configurations, noble gas configuration, excited configurations, and ions. So let's hop to it. It's kind of a long one. Atoms come with electrons. But it's helpful to think of atoms as adding electrons one at a time. So they don't individually get ones so like to go shopping and pick up electrons. So, but if we think of them as being added one at a time, that means we need a filling order. So what order do they fill up? And it's off ball doesn't need to be all capitalized, which is German for building up. But when I had a German exchange student ask him what off ball meant, he didn't understand what I was saying. So you add electrons to the lowest energy level first. Why the lowest energy? Because that's where they're the most stable. Remember, the world is stable in low energy. Think of a baby. Oh, baby. Okay. Do babies like low energy? Rock up by baby. Or high energy. Remember, if you shake babies, it causes brain damage and death, even the first time. Periodic table shows this order of filling. Your blocks are S, P, D, and F. And the weirdest part about it is this is also an S. So S, S, P, D, F. Good questions. How many columns are in the S block? Well, let me look back. You should get a periodic table already. Look, there's two columns in the S block. Oh. So how many electrons are in the S block? Two. It ends in S2. Okay. One S2, so two is the most electrons can hold. How would three S2 be different? Well, one S2 would be top row, 2s2 would be the second row, and 3s2 would be the third row. Okay, Different how? Third energy level. How many electrons are in the p, d, and f block? So if we look and count those things, we can see that they're in the p block. You should be looking at your real periodic table, not my ghetto one right here. No offense, JLo. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 columns. So that's p6, and you get the idea, you count them out. d10, and F is 14. Yeah, there you go. Get electric configurations for carbon. So now we're going to look at our periodic table. So as we go from left to right on the periodic table, and we're going to ignore this part here. 6, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, So carbon. So this first row, I'm going to write 1s2 because there are two electrons in the 1s block. And on the second row, I would have 2s2. And then carbon is right here in that next spot. So that's going to be 2p2. See how I'm tracing it on the periodic table? Okay. Second electron is carbon on the second row. So second row, p block, second electron. Rubidium. Wow, that's longer. Going across, 1s2. 2s2. This one goes all the way across, 2p6. Then you've got 3s2. Then you have from aluminum to argon is 3p6. If you don't have a periodic table out, you might as well quit school. So get your periodic table if you've been trying to fake it so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go do it. Okay. Then after argon, number 19 and 20 are potassium and calcium, 4s2. And then from scandium to zinc, number 21 to 30. It's weird. You would think it would be 4D, but it's 3D10. The D group is a core, they're core electrons. So they actually go in a lower energy level. So notice how that's lower than the 4. Then from 31 to krypton is 4P6. And then finally I get to rubidium, which is number 37, which would be 5S1. Okay. Now, samarium. If you look at samarium, which is number 62, you should groan out loud. Oh, I have to do 62 of these. Yes, you do. So we'll start across the top. Number one and two is helium, 1s2. Uh, three and four are lithium and beryllium, second row, s block, two. Boron to neon, two, p, six. Notice how that p block is there, and there's six of them. And then sodium and magnesium, three, s, two. And then aluminum through to argon is three, p, Six, and then four. Oh, you—you're not gonna—you're gonna crash on me. Okay, toodles. I'll pick this up next time. 